Samsung has tried a few different times to make a successful smartwatch, and they've been in the game for quite a while. This is their latest attempt, the Gear S2, and it's definitely looking like a great watch. So there are three things to focus on here, the hardware, navigation, and the software. Starting off the hardware, there's three versions of the S2. Two of them look like this one, and they're made of stainless steel and come in a black and silver color. And then there's a second version that looks the same as this one, but instead of only having Bluetooth, they also connect over 3G and have GPS built in. And then there is the S2 Classic, which has a more high-end look and a leather band. So like I said, this is made of stainless steel and has silicone bands by default, but they are replaceable. As far as design goes, for the most part I like it, but it doesn't look nearly as good as it did in pictures. It just looks like a nice sports watch, but you wouldn't really want to wear this version out on a nice night out. It's just not that kind of watch. But aside from the looks, this watch is actually very comfortable and light, and it really conforms to your wrist very well, and I like it. On the back, there's a heart rate sensor, and up front there's a 1.2 inch AMOLED display with 302 pixels per inch, and it looks good. Colors are vibrant, and it gets bright enough to see outside no problem, and saves power with the background being black. On the inside, you get 4GB of storage to store your music and such, and a 250mAh battery in this model, so it should last you all day. But luckily, Samsung finally got rid of their horrible charging solutions, and just included a magnetic wireless charging dock, so it's much easier to charge. It's also IP68 water resistant and has NFC built in so you can use it with Samsung Pay, and overall this is a pretty full featured watch. And this brings us to how you navigate this watch. That screen is touchscreen so you use it as you normally would, and around that you have a rotatable bezel that kind of works like the digital crown on the Apple Watch, and then you have two buttons on the side, a back button on top and a home button on the bottom. Moving over to the software, this is running a new version of Samsung's Tizen OS, and luckily this time around you don't have to use just a Samsung phone to use it, it works with most Android phones, and I'm using it on the G4. But when I look at the software and how you navigate it, it feels like Samsung took a look at what Google was doing and what Apple was doing and kind of mashed it up into something that worked for Samsung, and that really isn't a bad thing. So far, it seems to work really well. For the UI, you get a series of screens with different apps and actions on them, and you can rearrange where they are, but to navigate between them, you rotate the bezel, and this seriously works extremely well. It's very smooth and has a notched feel, so you can be precise, and it really is a great way to navigate. Also on the side, you have those two buttons, and this lets you easily go back to where you came from with the back button, or quickly go back home with the home button. And if you click the home button again, you can quickly go to your apps. Here again, you use the bezel to navigate between which apps you want, and these can all be installed through the app on the phone. Some of the design for these apps is kinda terrible, like the CNN app, but that really is up to developers to make, and there really needs to be some more support from third parties to make apps on this watch really useful. Of course, you get a bunch of Samsung's apps, and a lot of fitness ones, which is actually pretty useful, but overall the app situation is kind of underwhelming. Besides the apps though, you do get notifications, and these are located to the left of the home screen, and again you can go through them with the bezel and get rid of them as you see fit, or open them up on your phone. You can also swipe down from the top to change the brightness, or put it in do not disturb mode, and you can change the watch face to a number of different styles, and through the app on the phone you can customize your own. Overall, the software seems pretty good, and it's definitely Samsung's best attempt at a watch OS, although there's still some weird things like a keyboard for messages. I mean, yeah, it's cool that you can reply to messages, but seriously, a keyboard? Although, I'm not surprised coming from Samsung. But luckily, you don't have to use that keyboard because there's a mic built in and you can use voice commands to dictate and do things. This is S-Voice, but luckily you can customize your commands so you don't ever have to think about the fact that you're using S-Voice, and it works really well. 
But yeah, that's Samsung's Gear S2, and as I said, it's their best attempt yet, and making it available for most Android phones will definitely give this some more room to grow. And if you don't like Android Wear or you just want to try something else, this is probably your best bet. And it's about the same price as other Android Wear smartwatches coming in at $300 US. Samsung is definitely stepping up their game this year. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I hope you all enjoyed. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. My name is Matt, and I will see you in the next video.